Under closing comments, year in review, Mr. Walbert. Yeah, I, I, I'm proud to make these comments, and it was funny. I'm sitting at home this weekend again, and in between doing a lot of things, and I, I want the committee to know how much I've thoroughly enjoyed um, coming back into public service in Hampton, and especially being on this committee. Uh, Chairman Jones, to you, um, I think you've done a spectacular job this year. I. Um, I learned a lot. You know, even someone like me who's been on prior boards and like Regina works a thousand different hours and Jerry trying to do everything in the town and going to meetings and meetings and Mr. LeBranch, one of my commissioners I worked with 25 years ago and Mr. Ladd and Mr. Pluff and his schedule and other people on our committee. <coughs> but I think the thing I was, one of the things I was most impressed with was your organization of our meetings, <coughs> your layout of the agendas. Your addition of, which I hope continues in next year's board, uh, the information request. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was so effective because it, it, set a, a, it set a place in an agenda for a falling meeting of what was to happen. I also appreciate very much your HamptonBud.com. I thought the, the links you had on there, the snippets from the meetings, um, advising us we can go look at certain things. I mean, we can watch the replays on the town website as well. but. I think the, the thing that culminated in starting in last March of 2018 and, and through now was the evolution of things are changing in a good way, meaning more questions were asked, which I think is wonderful, of all the boards in town, whether it was the, towns, uh, the town budget, whether it was our uh, SAU 90 budget, whether it was the budget presented by the Village District uh, Commissioners tonight talking about tax rates, talking about Warren articles and, and drilling down in our budgets, drilling down the budgets as well, looking at uh, what it means to, to bring out data issues so that the public is very educated on what they're voting on. Um, I was thoroughly impressed. And you know, there will be people to say, well, we had disagreements and this and that. Well, to me, that's not, that's not a bad thing. You know, the Budget Committee, as Mr. LeBranch knows, has been former chairman, by nature is an adversarial because we are preparing a budget for the voters. We have to make decisions that maybe people will say, well, why, why are they questioning department heads or why are they questioning this? Um, I, I just thought it was terrific. I think we end the year setting, sending everything to the voters. And I think Mr. Ladd made the comment it's throughout the year. He's absolutely right. You know, at the, at the end of the day, on March 12th, the voters will decide. I'm very excited to be coming back, uh, you know, or still on the committee. Of course, I've got a couple more years to go. And I, I think you set a great tone this year and very organized. Your attendance was exemplary. Your keeping in touch with us was exemplary. I think um, asking the questions, and, and certainly the gentleman to my right, which I wish had run again, and yourself, um, coming back on to help us out with his due diligence. and. Um, all of you I've worked with, you all have an unbelievable work ethic, and I, I think that's what I'm most proud of because you put the effort in and that, at the end of the day. Uh, I can't help but think, and I've got to compliment Mr. LeBranch, you know, it was September of 1996 in this room, the first meeting, and Mike and I were selectmen back then, September of 1996 when we put the very first televised meeting and Mr. LeBranch was a commissioner. He sat out there and Vic Lassard was here that night and we, we swore in Justin Cutting as a firefighter and we promoted Matt Clark to lieutenant. Look at where we come, we're, look at where we become. We become the information highway. And that's why those of us really want to make sure that the information is always available. Thanking so much the cable folks, Bill Lowney and Brian McCain and company, and, and all of the meetings that are televised. And the school district, because Channel 13 does their good work as well. So you're able to watch all kinds of things. Um, I was excited this year, and I, I really appreciate um, your professionalism and your keeping us in line. You know, you did a great job running the meeting. One of the big, not keep, some, somebody like me keeping in line must be tough at times. But you it was went, a pleasure, Brian. You went around <laughs> and you said to people, okay, Mr. LeBranch has the, the, the floor, or Mr. Pluff. And I, I respected that, and I, I think you deserve a lot of credit, and you will be missed. I, I hope you decide to, to come back again. You've put a, a gallant effort in six years, and I think it's to be commended, and I want to thank you. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBrand. Everything that Brian said, and a little bit more. Jerry, I want to thank you for 
coming back and helping us out. Yes. Okay. Well, that, you're welcome. You did a, a that was an excellent service. You obviously were able to f get right in and hit the ground running. Thank you very much, you Mr. Thanked. Chair. You did a good job. Thank you. I wish to thank all of the committee members, every one of us. You know, the thing that um, that makes this town of Hampton so absolutely wonderful and such a jewel is that not only the the uh, the village district, but also the budget committee, but all the committees in this town, all of the folks that make this town, thank you, Brian, make this town as wonderful as it is. And, you know, our, we, everybody shows up at these meetings. It's amazing. I know we get a little bit smaller group nowadays, and I think it works great. I think it works better than when we had 14 or 15 people. This works out much better. But, you know, it impresses me so much that when we get into the cycle, and we're meeting sometimes twice a week, mm -hmm. and everybody shows up, everybody on this committee shows up to do their work. And yeah, we ask a lot of questions, and you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. So yeah, you know, you're not always gonna, everybody's not gonna agree on everything. But at the end of the day, we have finished our cycle, and now it goes to the voters, whether it's at the village district, the schools. Uh, the, we did our job, and I congratulations to every one of us. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Brandt. Anybody else with a comment? Jerry? I have, yeah, I, I, I'll be brief here. I think the last two years uh, uh, between Steve and yourself have done a lot to organize the budget committee and keep it in control. It was really, the previous years, it was, uh, I would say, uh, out of control, relatively speaking. Everybody talking over everybody and uh, people cutting in and out of conversations and going around the table of 12 people or 13 people and trying to get everybody's input. Then having to go back because they wanted to comment on what somebody else just said, blah, blah, blah. That didn't work. It's working now organizationally. But what I think we still need to do is become more analytical. The budget is coming in here with little review. The town manager doesn't touch it very much. In terms of any kind of reductions, you're talking maybe 0.01%, something like that. And the BOS doesn't do very much. Those are softball questions they throw up there, and they thank them very much for doing a great job, and the budget comes floating in here. Okay, This, this is the committee that has to do the analytics. And come with, a, with those analytics and the study of the last two or three years worth of spending and the year-to-date spending, should come, should come assertiveness and recommendations, and there'll be some confrontation. Without it, you don't have strength. Right. Confrontation gives you strength of direction and respect. And sometimes that's what it is, confrontation. You get somebody to take exception to you, and you get into a heated argument over it, and then everybody on the you know, committee kind of freezes up. Can't do that. You don't belong on the committee unless you're ready to go to bat right. and take your swings. So you've got to become analytical. I think there's a way to go there. You have, you've got a way to go there yet. But you're organized and you're in control, so you have the mechanisms in place. But on that, there's nothing that you can, you know, that's better than good metrics. You look at the last two, three, four years worth of spending, you look at year-to-date worth of spending, and you ask your questions. <coughs> now, if you don't get the right answers, you make a recommendation of a reduction of a certain amount of money. That's how budgets are done. That's not how they've been done. So there's the challenge. Other than that, two years worth of organization and control and development have really been exciting and uh, effective. Steve, you let it off last year and did a wonderful job. Thanks, Jim. And Steve continued, I mean, Timmy continued, uh, but now we need some hardball. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's all I have to say. Anybody else? Well? Hi, I just want to wish you the very best going forward and whatever you choose to do with the rest of your life, <laughs> now that you're disconnected from the from my afterlife? Yeah. <laughs> it's afterlife. No, we're not wishing that. <laughs> but no, the very best. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Yeah. Anybody else? No? All set. Okay. I, I've been here six years, and now you're all, everyone on camera knows that I'm gone after this meeting from this, this committee. Um, I came in here six years ago, um, <clears throat> so ignorant that I did not know how ignorant I was. And now, after six years, I can say with confidence that I'm less ignorant. And I'm more
more knowledgeable other areas that I don't know anything about, and, I, and I'll need to fill those in if I need to step into those areas. So I appreciate an education, as I've mentioned numerous times over the years. Learning new stuff is something that I really enjoy doing, and I've learned a lot of new stuff. Well, it was new to me anyway. And, um, and so I, I very much value that six years. Well, it has been six years. And most of, the, most of those years I've been working there full time <coughs> in my uh, duties, uh, trying to understand exactly what is what, and maybe even developing some tools to try to help out the committee and doing some other things. <coughs> Spent a lot of time on it and learned a lot as a consequence. I do suggest, Jerry, that uh, your comment about uh, improvement, I think the improvement's been going on every year for at least five years. Now, it has been, <coughs> it's been incremental, um, but it's been there. Right? Um, prior to, you know, I don't know, seven years ago or so, it was like really kind of sad. And uh, we've moved kind of sort of out of that sad state into a state where we're actually beginning to function as a committee as a committee ought to, in my opinion, but we have a, the committee has a lot further to go. I think more organization build on the successes that we achieved over the last few years. We gotta continue to do the, what I would refer to as continuous improvement, always striving to do something better, not just accept that's the way we've done it and that's just the way we're gonna do it going forward. There's always a way to do something better. We just gotta put a little energy into thinking about it. So I would encourage the committee to continue not to sit on the laurels of the past few years, but let's strive for even better. Uh, what we did this year, what we did last year, is not perfect. There's lots of room for improvement. We need more tools on this committee. Uh, Jerry, you talked about uh, doing the analytics. Well, that's great, but we need, we need the resources to do that. That means time. Every member needs to have the time to do it. And we also need tools in which to facilitate the time that we're spending doing those analytics. And I think what's been lacking uh, in this committee is we have virtually no resources when you come right down to it. Over the years, I've heard arguments that, well, we have, we have legal uh, availability from the selectman's attorney, but it turns out that's not really true, it's just as I've been arguing for years, because he's not going to tell us the unvarnished truth. He's going to tell us the, the truth as the selectman would have him say, because they are his boss. That's just the nature of the way things work. This past year, we had four questions of legal opinion. We got refusal to answer the questions, which manifests the reality that we have no legal resource whatsoever. We can go, yeah, we can go to the selectmen's um, <clears throat> lobbying group, known as the New Hampshire Municipal Association, and get a legal opinion from them after we go through the protocol. But again, they are not exactly an independent source of, of uh, legal wisdom, are they? Because they have their own agenda that they're following. Um, <clears throat> and we tried to hire, when Mary Louise was chairman a few years ago, that she tried to hire an attorney, and that caused a whole ruckus. So getting, getting, a, a, uh, getting resources in working on this committee has been problematic. Having, uh, you know, uh, a website, thehamptonbud.com, was my example of saying, here's a prototype, Let's just, I'll just develop that as the, as the year went on. All that stuff was going on this year was, was developed and it was occurring as I discovered the need as the committee was being administered this year. So in addition to doing the work of the, as the chairman, I was also doing a lot of software development trying to catch up with our need. But hamptonbud.com is, is, is far inadequate in the sense that there is so many things that we need to, uh, that the budget committee needs to uh, facilitate its work. Uh, and and HamptonBud.com is just the tip of the iceberg. You really need, the future committees really need to look at um, refining their resources, particularly their tools, uh, in terms of doing the work. So I would just close by saying I'm very happy to have served the six years because I've learned stuff that I didn't know before and was unlikely to learn anywhere else. Uh, and so I really enjoyed uh, learning the experience and some of the struggles we've had. It's been very enlightening. And I appreciate everyone tolerating my idiosyncrasies during the course of those years. I have uh, a question for you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> sure. In your six years, have you seen any improvements in your resources at all? Um, well, in my resources, yes. As I, a budget committee chairman or member. Well, yeah, I mean, the existence of Hampton, the incorporation of the website 
in the administration of the committee, I think is a significant improvement that, that has been done. But again, those are resources that were done. You created those resources. Uh, exactly. It was done gratis. I mean, to, 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 to do that work, you would have cost, you know, money. There was no way we were going to get the time to pay for it. Because my problem with the budget flow, or however you want to describe it, not just at this level, but at the Board of Selectmen level, is, first of all, when we get the budget, it seems like it's rushed. Mm -hmm. Even though they start working on it in the summertime, by we get it, it's like, I don't know, September, October. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then we're like, oh, the budget committee wants it by Halloween, you know, around that time frame, <coughs> sometime the end of October, beginning of November. So when I look at it, we're looking at maybe 930 numbers. And, okay, it's reasonable, but, you know, in my head I'm thinking, well, we still have three months to go. Mm -hmm. So I would almost prefer, um, and I don't know what's going to happen after we reorganize. I don't know what's going to happen after the election, actually. But um, when we reorganize as a board, and if I'm chosen to be the budget committee mem uh, representative again, I would almost prefer that we held off on everything a little longer at the selectman level and at this level. Because it's like we'll look, when we first start looking at the budget, it's like not even applicable by the time we start reviewing the sections because a month's gone by. And then it's like October 31st. So now you have another bump. And then when we get closer to being done with the budget, we get the 1130 numbers. And when the gap at 1130 is similar or bigger than the gap at 930 that I didn't see when I was a selectman looking at the 930 numbers, it's like, okay, well, I'm on the budget committee, so let's see what they're going to do when they look at it. So I know that we've always been like, oh, we got to get everything to the budget committee, and then we had the Warren articles, and maybe if we can tell the public that if you want to petition a Warren article, and you think that you're going to want to petition a Warren article, if you don't see it in the first round of Board of Selectmen Warren articles, maybe you should just petition it then, instead of waiting till like the last week or whatever. So then maybe push that whole Warren article, rushing those to the committee, because we might not get the budget till later. Review the budget. And then hopefully when we get the Warren articles, the majority of them will actually all be there. Maybe one or two petition ones will trickle in. And I think we can also encourage the public that if they have money Warren articles, I mean, give us a little notice so that we can do a thorough review at the board level and at the budget committee level. Because it's literally like, well, the board of selectmen has got to do this so that we can get it to the budget committee. Well, that, that's not how I work. So I think that maybe if we could, you know, I've talked to Mary Louise a little bit about it because I know she has a long history working on the budget committee. But it seems at the board of selectmen level, I agree with you, it's rushed. That was Brian. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Jerry. whoever said it. Jerry said it. Someone said it over there. It's rushed. But there's nothing I can do if I'm only looking at 930 numbers at the same time, too, and I still have a whole quarter to go. Well, let me, let me comment on that if I can. Sure. Um, the problems that, that you're expressing on, on the Board of Selectmen relative to the budget are actually exacerbated at the Budget Committee because we get it even later. Yeah. And we're dealing with the same old numbers, only now they're more old. So the problem, to, to delay it getting to the Budget Committee is only going to exacerbate the problem the Budget Committee has in dealing with, with those old numbers. Well, I think the um, whole... So I'm concerned about that. The whole, the whole issue is, is uh, structurally uh, flawed, and that's the problem. Is that people are voting in March for a budget in which 20% uh, of it has already been spent. So structurally, right away, we're starting off flawed, very d deeply flawed. And so w whatever you can do fixes to improve things, maybe, but it's still going to be flawed in that respect, as well as possibly others. Now, as you, as you pointed out, the uh, uh, department has put their budgets together in June. So why isn't the Board of Selectmen reviewing their budget proposals in July or August instead of October? That's the part that doesn't make sense to me. It well, could be I, yeah, brought I mean, to the Budget Committee earlier with the same numbers, except for the 930 number, arguably. But we could probably have that made. Well, it's probably available. just typical. We've always gotten it to the Budget Committee in October. Yeah, so it's we'll always done it that way, that argument. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, ongoing yeah, yeah. and ongoing and ongoing. But then that's why I don't like that general argument. It's always done it because that means it basically... Uh, puts the squash on any new ideas for improvement. 
I, I don't like this. We always done it as a justification because it just kills the idea of doing any kind of uh, improvement. And so uh, I think there is room for improvement, uh, but I think, as I said earlier, if the department heads are done with their budget in June, then why isn't, uh, certainly town manager shouldn't have a few weeks to review it before the selectmen. Sure, by August maybe the, the uh, selectmen should be tap tackling the budget uh, so that the budget committee can get it maybe a month earlier than it presently does. So. Uh, Anyway, those are my thoughts on what you had said, Jerry. You Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to also comment on the subject. He, he, here's my recommendation and my thoughts on it. I think Chris, Christy Pullman can help out here. If she can give us like three years of what has actually been spent and then the three-year average of that, okay? And then you have, let's say, for, let's say 15, 16, and 17, and you have 18 in your hands in September. And you know that you got eight months of spending or nine months of spending, whatever the, whenever you get the budget. So you have a three-year average spend rate for the line item. You've got 15, 16, and 17, and 18 year-to-date, let's say. So you look at that 18 year-to-date, and you look at the three-year moving average, average, and you say to yourself, gee, Here's what I got through August. Can I, is, this, is this is line item annual? Can I annualize this budget? Can I annualize this line item? Most of the line items you can annualize. Some of them you can analyze, annualize. And what I mean by that is if you've got eight months of spending, you have eight, you, it's, you know, you've got eight twelfths. Right. And then you just, you just, and you just take the, uh, the spending through, through eight months and then multiply that by 12. Yeah, I know how to do that. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying, uh, yeah. So, so <laughs> Would you like a little illustration? <laughs> yeah. Love that. So if you have the three-year average... But you need those three years so that you can comparatively yeah, look at... Yeah, and the average of those three years. Not just one year, yeah. Yeah, you need three years and then the average of those three years, and then year-to-date, and can you annualize it or not? Some of the line items you can't. I learned that you you know, know, right. as well as I was going along. And But then you, you've got a good foot... You've got the data. Now you can ask questions that are meaningful. I don't hear that going on at the BOS level. And I don't really hear it going on here either in the budget committee, to be quite honest with you. And it, it gets confrontive, but you got, hey, nothing comes without a little bit of pain. You gotta be assertive, you gotta bring up the facts, you gotta push on them, and you gotta get a good answer back or you're not comfortable. All set, Jerry? Yeah. Mr. Warburg. Yeah, I just wanted to my good friend here. I, I think we did ask a lot of questions this year. I mean, it was a lot of drill down. But Regina brings up an ex excellent point. And let me remind everyone that <clears throat> prior to SB2 in 1997, Mike and I would be sitting Thanksgiving week, selectmen Thanksgiving week, looking at the budgets. It was that far later because you had, you actually had a, right, Stephen, the old town meeting form of government. We all got there. It was some merit to that. SP2's had merit. The problem is, and, and to Regina's defense, I, I see where the issue rise too, and there's no question that has a lot. It's like, you know, here it is, all of a sudden it's Labor Day and we've all had a great summer and stuff. Um, I think it's, it deserves a lot of discussion, and, and to Jerry's point of three years, I like that idea. But I, I, I would be remiss, though, and, and I hope you do come back on uh, Selectman Barnes to the Budget Committee. I, you should be very proud because you worked hard for three years, and first three years, probably the toughest. I can attest to some of that. I hope. But, but, but think about this. Think about this. In this town, in this town, day and age, in 2019, in a very big town city we have to run a post, um, a lot of people have faith in you. So you should be proud of that. And, Thank you know, you. the work that you exemplified. You've been the information deliverer, too, which I think has been terrific across the spectrums. That's going to continue to help us, I think, as we move on. Um, yeah, it's it's not easy because we get that information, and it's it's. I don't know if it's any one area that's at fault, but it's it is tough, isn't it? Because we get revision number three, and Regina's good enough to go back to get the information. We come back and we get revision, and you'd hand it to us, and we get through ten thirty or ten thirty one or eleven thirty. I I think. That brings up the whole thing we've been talking about. We all talk together more. We bring up more questions. I think, I will say, thing. I think the message this year was really sent for all of, across the boards that, you know, maybe they'll come with more information ahead of time. What, you know, with the questions we're going to ask anyway. But 
the kind of the concept that we're under. And as you said, the last couple of years with a slower, uh, a smaller committee, which I think has been the greatest thing ever. I really do believe that having nine members has been phenomenal. So I, I welcome the discussion. Like I said, Tim, I, you, you're not going too far. You'll still be around, and Jerry too. But I, I appreciate. Uh, I'll be on the bench. <laughs> that's okay. But I appreciate all the discussion, and we'll continue it certainly uh, after the election. Okay, Jerry. Yeah, and I hear that, Brian. I appreciate what you're saying, but bottom line, bottom line, how much did we affect the budget that was given to us? Not very much. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Bob? No, I think okay. a lot of this conversation would be more appropriate at the next meeting. Yeah. When the new committee. I think it's appropriate to have this conversation yeah. for the year uh, going forward, certainly. Yeah. But I think in, in a year in review is also appropriate, but I think it's appropriate now as well. I'm not saying it's not appropriate yeah. now. Okay. I'm saying it should be carried over mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the beginning. Absolutely. To right. spring training for the next budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's what we're doing now, so it's spring training. <laughs> Winter <laughs> training, I guess. <laughs> Anybody else uh, want to comment? Uh, you're all set? Okay. Um, I think we're all set on closing comments slash yep. review, right? Okay. Yep.